What we see here is a frictionless trunnion bearing that is part of the 5-inch 51 caliber guns on Battleship Texas. While this grease-packed mechanism seems like a pretty minor thing to talk about, stick with me and I'll show exactly why it's anything but that. By the way, this video answers a challenge that I posted about a week ago, so jazz hands and a major attaboy goes to NoWalk8218, who is the first to correctly give the bearing's function and name. Bear with me a few more seconds while I ask that you watch the complete video and click like so that it will make as much money as possible. The first 30 days of earnings will be donated to help with repairs that are currently being performed on the ship, so these are two small ways that you can help with the effort. So what is a frictionless trunnion bearing? How can any bearing be called frictionless and why was it so important? The first thing to know is that practically all cannons use some form of trunnions. There are the posts that protrude from each side of a barrel and act as pivots so that it can be vertically aimed. Trunnions first show up on Chinese cannons that are almost 1,000 years old. They started showing up with frictionless bearings in the late 1800s that made vertically aiming or pointing them much easier and faster to accomplish. The bearings on Texas's 5-inch guns were so good and so durable, they remained unchanged throughout the gun's service life starting in 1910 and ending with its retirement at the end of World War II. The total weight of the Mark 15 5-inch 51 caliber guns on Texas is 23,400 pounds each. 16,200 pounds of that weight is in the oscillating assembly made up of the barrel, screw box, breech plug, slide, recoil buffers, and siding mechanism. That weight is supported only on the trunnions and rotates on them when being vertically aimed. Proper design also requires that the trunnions be able to move practically friction-free while rotating the 8 tons of weight through a 25 degree range of rotation. There must also be no lost motion, which is any unwanted looseness that may allow the barrel to shift and lose accuracy. If that isn't difficult enough, the two trunnion bearings must survive 96,000 pounds of recoil force without damage during each of the thousands of times the gun may be fired. This is one of the trunnions. There's one on the other side too. These have to be perfectly aligned, perfectly machined. And one thing that, let's see here, there is a brass ring, a brass sleeve, that sits on it that acts kind of like a bearing surface. You can even see that there are lubrication grooves that we'll talk about a little bit more in that. Now, this is what sits in what's called the frictionless bearing that, that allows the, the gun to uh, point or elevate without any effort at all beyond just simply its own mass. It all rests on this, which is called knife edge. The knife edge sits inside of this and is captured. So this trunnion, and I'm going to take you over and show you the rest of the bearing assembly. The entire trunnion, or I'm sorry, the entire gun slide and barrel sits on this on each side. That's about 9,000 pounds of weight total. So each one of these supports about 4,500 pounds. Now this has to be perfectly adjusted in that bearing assembly. We're, we'll see that in just a little bit. But in order to do that, there's a big re, uh, adjusting bolt that fits in here that was shown in the diagram. And that is, will push, can be used to push this bearing up and down to adjust the height of this trunnion in its mount. Now let's see if I can poke that out. So, so here we go. This is what we have on the uh, gun slide end of things. Now let's go over and we'll take a look at the, uh, at the frictionless bearing. And keep in mind what I just showed you because we hit, you'll have to kind of use your imagination at this point. So we showed you the, tr uh, the uh, trunnion and uh, the uh, brass sleeve that sits on it and that little uh, box that sticks out that the knife edge sits in and is adjusted. So we're going to start out here. Here's the mount. All of this is part of the mount, including this little saddle that sticks out that's been machined into it. We'll start by setting what we call the roller bearing in it, which is really more of a bearing race. And you can see it, it was slotted to where it slides, can slide back and forth, but it's held firmly in place side to side. We're going to set that a little off center because right now we, we partially installed uh, this uh, the cap here and you can see that it uh, it's not slid all the way in it's really tightly jammed and I don't want to drive it in and then have trouble getting it out so we've got this set in 
at this point we would have the cap square this have it off we'd go ahead and lower the gun slide with the trunnion into place and it's going to sit right down in here behind this bar in fact you might even just have this off you set it in place you set you uh, set the roller bearing in and then the next thing we do is we set a couple of rollers in there like that and that now we're going to take remember we've got that little box with the thread the box that retains the knife edge at this point we'd take the knife edge and we'd slide it up in that box and we'd hold it in place with one finger until we can set what's called the spring bar on here now with that we can drive we can push the knife edge down to where it rests right like this on here and then the big adjusting nut that tightens down we go ahead and we run it down to where it sits on top and it pushes against the knife edge now if we keep tightening that what's going to happen is it's going to put all the way to this trunnion uh, on the knife edge with the spring bar through the rollers through the roller bearing and into this cheek and at some point all the weight will be taken up to where it literally lifts that trunnion up and the weight of the trunnion is supported here that in fact that's if you measured carefully what you'd find is this is the perfect center of rotation for that trunnion that's really important we'll cover that in just a second so we have it in place we put the, we drive the cap square in you can see these two big bolts we run them down and that fully captures it so how does this thing work because we pretty well got it assembled oh there's one other thing here's a wedge here that that's adjustable we'll talk about that in just a minute first thing we need to do is to adjust it because what we want all around on this entire surface is for that trunnion to be spaced ideally three thousandths of an inch all the way around to where the trunnion is balanced on this only and it does not touch this anywhere this is why they call it a uh, uh, frictionless bearing because we the full weight of this slide and the gun barrel is on this bearing and also on the other one that's 9,000 pounds supported by the two so this right here supports 4,500 pounds of pressure now when they elevate the gun so that it tell uh, or point it or elevate it what it's going to do is this bearing this knife edge is going to rock back okay and so there's nothing rubbing it's literally like a seesaw and it rocks back and since that's the center the center of rotation right there if everything's adjusted right that trunnion will rotate in here and it will maintain its distance all the way around to where it will not touch uh, the the uh, gun mount anywhere on these sides now one other thing to notice is that these teeth only extend part of the way back that way most of the weight and force is actually on these nicely smoothly machined surfaces so what are the teeth for well when you fire the gun well, you don't want it so smooth that this would actually be bumped back out of position so these teeth are just enough to keep the knife edge in position on top of this spring block well how can you have have something that small hold it well that's because of the rest of the way this works now when the gun fires and you have recoil if this was the only thing that supported it it would tear it up pretty quickly but what happens is this only has to move three thousandths of an inch to come in contact with the uh, with the mount of the surfaces around here so these rollers allow it to roll actually just so little that you probably couldn't even see it move but as you can see it takes no effort at all to move this the only effort involved is overcoming the mass just as a matter of inertia overcoming the mass of the barrel and the slide so this easily rolls back the trunnion comes up against this mount and that absorbs all the force of recoil once the recoil is gone since these are semicircular impressions it just rolls and centers itself back now having said all of that that's a perfect world but uh, you know these aren't perfect and so what can possibly happen is you're still going to occasionally have it'll get a little bit out and you'll have these contact part points with the brass that might wear the brass some or even coming up against this after repeated firings might flatten it out some 
what happens then is that opens up the tolerances. You might have four, five, six thousandths of an inch clearance between the trunnion and the mount, which is not acceptable. The way we overcome that is with this wedge. When you turn this screw, that slides the wedge in there and you can and let's see here let's see if i can get that off of there as that swat wedge slides in what it does is it pushes against the trunnion and actually pushes it over so with that you're going to maintain contact uh, which may not be entirely desirable here with the trunnion uh, but all along here you'll have that gap that you need and that's that's what you're looking for because it really doesn't matter if you have a little wear here, uh, the gap can be a little off here. The main thing is that clearance over on this side. Now, you have a grease fitting up here, you're going to shoot grease in there and you noticed on the trunnion, that bra uh, brass sleeve, that there were lubrication grooves. So you shoot grease down in here, you uh, elevate and depress the gun a few times and that works all the lubrication into these surfaces between, the, uh, between that brass sleeve and the, um, and the mount surfaces. So there you have it, that's the way this works. And as you can see, what a beautifully engineered design and it worked very, very well. Let's see what happens inside the bearing when the gun is in operation. The point of contact between the knife edge and spring bar fully supports the trunnion and is the only place where the trunnion makes contact with the mount. That point of contact is also the trunnion's center of rotation. For that reason, when the barrel is elevated and the trunnion rotates, it stays centered in the mount and will not touch anything more than where its hardened steel knife edge sits on the hardened knife edge bearing that is part of the spring block. Since the two surfaces don't slide, they roll against one another and the bearing moves without friction. With the gun now aimed, how does the bearing stay in alignment and not be destroyed when the gun is fired? The key is the two rollers and the concave depressions that they rest in. They will always provide less resistance to motion than any other part of the assembly. So when the gun fires, the immense 96,000 pounds of recoil force pushes the trunnion and knife edge back. At the same time, the full barrel and slide weight of 16,200 pounds divided between the two knife edges will hold them firmly against the spring bars. This offers more resistance than the rollers, so the complete assembly easily rolls backwards on the roller bearing until the trunnion contacts the carriage saddle. The brass sleeve takes quite a pounding as the gun is repeatedly fired, and the result is tolerances open up in that gap between the trunnion and the mount. So how do we adjust for that? Well, that's what the adjusting wedge is for. The adjusting wedge has an inner surface that exactly matches the curve of the brass sleeve and an outer surface that is flat and tapered to form a wedge. It sits in a slot in the cap square that holds the assembly in place along with an adjusting screw. Looking at the trunnion and mount from the top, you can see how the wedge sits between the brass trunnion sleeve and the gray inner curve of the cap square. The red gap between them is ideally only three thousandths of an inch wide. If it needs adjusting, the screw is turned to force the wedge inward so that its angled outer surface evenly pushes the curved inner surface of the wedge up against the trunnion. That in turn forces the entire trunnion sideways to narrow the gap and bring the opposite side into proper tolerance. So there you have it. The frictionless trunnion bearings used a design that was truly elegant because it was a simple solution that overcame a number of problems efficiently, reliably, and without fail. I want to thank Marco Marioni with Battleship Texas Foundation for providing me with photos of the bearings taken while the gun was still assembled and mounted in the ship. I also want to recognize and thank Tony DeGillian, who is the creator of the website NavWebs. For the last 20 years, it has been my first stop anytime I wanted specifics on naval guns. Tony also found and gave me ballistics tables for the 5 inch gun that I'll be using in future videos. If you made it to the end, there's a punchline. While the bearings were designed to be frictionless, there's no conceivable way they were in service. There are simply too many things that would interfere with the extreme precision required for them to perform at that level. What they could do was support the heavy loads placed upon them while providing extremely low friction and an ability to absorb heavy pounding created by gunfire without damage.